Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where today John and I get to speak with Michelle Fabrica, our love and relationship coach. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. Michelle, it's great to see you again. You know, uh, the three of us are old enough, uh, celebrating our second act, as it were, that we have adult children and um, our relationships with our children. Um, you know, they change over time as they get older, as we get older. And uh, sometimes the communications is not the best. Sometimes um, we just don't want to talk about certain things. And I have seen that in lots of people uh, that the adult children uh, really want to have their independence to the point where they don't want to discuss issues with their with their parents. And sometimes that's hurt. That's hurtful, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said, it, you know, it's not uncommon for people to kind of drift away from their parents as they get older. And that's part of their job, right, is individuating as, you know, independent people. And But sometimes there is actually like kind of a clear sort of falling out that we might have with our adult children. And um, if this is the case for you, not you personally, but like one of our listeners, I just invite you, like, this is something that you can address, you know, and um, I have some ideas for how that could go. Oh, good. That's good. Well, you're always full of good ideas. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the first thing really is to think about is what is your rationale for wanting to be more in contact with your adult child, right? And I know that seems like, well, what do you mean? Obviously, I just want to be closer to them. But, but, but really, like, is it a pure and loving sort of interest? Or is there some other interest, like, you know, you want to show off to your friends or to prove you're a good person or, or you need their help or you want to, you know, meddle in their lives or something, be able to, you know, hang out with your grandchildren. Like, you know, um, sometimes we're not feeling fulfilled in our own life and we want to kind of get something from our adult kids. And, and you know, there's nothing wrong with some of these motivations, but the problem is that sometimes they feel like people sense our motivations, right? And so it feels like, you know, um, they want something from us. So yeah. it's better to kind of notice it and like, can you connect with that just pure, I want to be in contact with this this human that's also my adult child and, you know, no agenda, no strings. So that's kind of the first thing to look at it, kind of take a sober assessment of yourself and your reasoning. Yes, good, good uh, advice, hard to do. Uh, but good advice. Yeah. And particularly as parents, we tend to think of, at least I do, <laughs> hey, my kids should be doing this, not me. I should be, you know, they should be doing it my way. But mm -hmm. that's not the way it is anymore. Right, right. And, you know, somebody has to make kind of the first um, reach, you know, uh, towards, you know, to pulling out the olive branch, right? So, yeah. so if you actually know the issue that might be between you, and you think you need to apologize for something, you know, start with that and make sure you don't explain or defend yourself, right? And we've talked about apologies in other videos, but an apology is not, I'm sorry, but I was going through a rough time and da 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 da, da you know, it doesn't have a but in it, right? And um, so that's one thing to do. And, you know, just reach out and tell them you miss them and you'd like to be in contact and ask them if they are willing to share honestly about why they haven't been in touch. and you know, that you want to open re the re and see if they want to, you know, reopen the, the connection between you and then listen, <laughs> mm. you know, it might be hard to hear. Um, you got to be prepared for that. Right. But, you know, it's not about defending yourself or, you know, nitpicking what they shared. Like, well, it didn't really go down that way. And it actually happened. Let them empty out whatever's on their mind and yeah. then thank them for sharing, you know, whatever it was. It seems to me that, uh, uh, that, while this topic is about not communicating uh, with your ad adult children, that this is really a transition that happens when, uh, I don't want to give the exact date because it's different for everybody, but when kids get to a certain level in the teenage years, they don't want to start talking about things. And I think part of it has to do with the fact that you're their boss, you tell them what to do, <laughs> and they want to think for themselves. And then maybe they get into such a, a thing about it. But I think that probably the more dangerous thing about it is that as we get older, uh, kids like we had to do with our parents, maybe help start making decisions about and them being the boss of, of what we should do with our lives because we don't see that maybe we should stop driving or maybe we need some 
to change our housing environment. It, like so, I, it's a natural thing. But but if it breaks down and you become aware of it, we don't like that. What do you suggest we do about it? Yeah, right. So you know when you know if your child is willing to share some of these challenges they've had in you know the time that you've spent together, you know um, if you can accomplish you know address their concerns or apologize in that moment. That would be wonderful. If not, tell them you know you need some time to digest what they've just shared with you, and do some soul searching. You know, either by yourself or with a close friend or with a counselor. Like, you know, what is it that? How can you be different with them to invite the two of you to have a more peer-to-peer -peer relationship? Right. So, you know, like you said, you know, we're not the boss of them. Right. They're not. They don't owe us anything really. I mean, some of us feel as parents, oh well, I've given to my kids this much and. But in reality, it's not really true. At least that's my belief, right? So, so the idea is to circle back to them and, and take the next step towards connection, right? And see how you can find ways to um, uh, have fun together again, right? Or just be curious about each other's lives. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It, it, the parent-child relationship is so important and it's always changing too. Over time, it becomes, the relationship moves and changes. Right, right. And so important to like, you know, you know, withhold that judgment or you mm. should, you know, the, the, do something, you know, and, you know, remember that relationships take time and um, comfort and trust take time to, to develop. So, um, you know, give yourself the spaciousness for that. Michelle, this is uh, good stuff, and I think important, particularly for our audience. Um, adult children are become uh, the parents to their parents at some point. Right. So this is this is good stuff. Any last thoughts? Well, actually, you're making me realize there's another topic here: is how mm. to that sh when that shift happens when our adult children are attending to us more in our, you know, older years, like we got a new topic there. <laughs> Good point. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's that. We'll write that down for a future visit. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.